just having a good time, having a bad day, yeah. A real good morning. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number one of the Bad Hair Day podcast. Uh, my name is Matt Beck. Uh, those of you guys that haven't been following me uh, or don't know about Free Salon Education, uh, it's a online education resource. Um, over 1,000 free hair tutorials. Uh, I've been doing YouTube content for over 10 years or about 10 years now, um, which I can't even believe. And uh, over that 10 years, I've created tutorials, I've created podcasts, um, all kinds of different stuff, grown uh, social following on all the different platforms. Uh, and, you know, I, this podcast is going to be a little bit different than ones I've done in the past because. Uh, I don't want to go into this. I want to go into it with a few thoughts and really just talk uh, freely and, um, you know, talk about things that are going on, whether they're going on and things I've dealt with throughout the week or things that have happened in our business or uh, on social media or in celebrity hair or whatever it is. I don't even know what celebrity hair is anymore. But anyways, uh, you know, and those are things I want to talk about. I want to really uh, just you know, give my thoughts on things that are happening in the industry, hopefully uh, create a really fun uh, community through this uh, that where, you know, you guys ask questions. If you're on a platform like YouTube or, uh, you know, you're seeing this on Facebook or in video form and you can comment, make sure you're commenting uh, any questions you have or things you want answered on a future show. Let me know because that's what it's all about. I like the, uh, the communication back and forth uh, that we can do, and it'll give me ideas for future shows and and different things like that. Um, I also want to be able to have this platform to update you guys on things that are happening in free salon education. Um, I just put out a, a couple of videos last week, uh, so if you guys haven't seen that, those, um, you know I, they were really fun videos. I did the octopus layered haircut. I didn't come up with that haircut. It was uh, something that. I read about and decided to create an education video on my take on how I would do that style of haircut um, or how I would cut that style. And uh, and then I did a shag haircut that was really 70s inspired, which I, I really liked doing. Um, and I got into the styling portion of it a little bit more. I think that's something that this year I really want to focus on. I try to, um, and I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I try to like look at things that maybe I struggle with a little bit and then try to research and find th people that are doing it in a way that fits me, right? So um, I get messages a lot from people that are talking about, you know, th they've tried to learn haircutting or from teachers or whatever it is, and I'm the person that they connected with the most. And I think that, um, you know, I'm always searching for that person in in my life as well. So, um, you know, I had that through learning haircutting and all of that, but, um, you know, then I had it in photography, uh, Frono's photo was a, a YouTube channel that I watched a lot. Um, you know, just to learn about camera equipment and different things, but he taught it in a way that I connected to, um, you know, th then there was Casey Neistat who, you know, was a popular vlogger at the time, 2016 time frame where I was also making YouTube content almost daily at that point. And, uh, you know, I took inspiration from what he was doing and tried to transfer it into, uh, into my world of, of what I was creating. So, you know, I think it's important to, to always be looking for that, that inspiration. So, you know, uh, it, with, with that being said, the shag hairstyle that I was doing, there's this guy on Instagram and I forget his handle. I'll try to put it up uh, on the video so you guys can see. Um, but Ben Brown was one of the guys that uh, that kind of showed him to me. And I really love this, this way, this style about how he puts the clips in the hair and kind of holds it in place. And I still don't fully understand it, but I play around with it a little bit. And that's, that's the fun part of, of the industry. That's the, that's the part that that drives me, that makes me want to do, uh, you know, better is when I learn something new and it's kind of what's driven my career, to be honest, it was, I was in hair school, not really 
you know, and this was 2004, a long time ago. Um, but I was in hair school and I, I loved hair cutting and that was kind of what I fell in love with first in the first few months. Uh, and maybe because it came a little bit easier to me, uh, and everything else is a little more foreign to me. And then, uh, one of my teachers gave me an an entire giant box of VHS tapes that were just collections of old hair cutters, um, like classic collections like Tony and Guy. And um, there was some Paul Mitchell videos in there. Uh, Michael Rorick was in there. Um, You know, there's a ton of guys and just classic, cool haircutting. Some of it was dry haircutting and texturizing. So um, that box of videos I watched Uh, a ton. And I learned so much from it. Um, and you know, that's kind of what it's all about. It's, it's really where my, uh, thought process and, and just my drive and everything came from that box of videos. So that's when I look at the internet, uh, YouTube is that it's, it's, but it's bigger, right? So like you have, uh, the opportunity to, to research and find and, it's just so funny to me when people talk about like, they're always asking such simple questions. And, and to me, it, it's never even been a question. If I like something or I love something, I just figure it out. Like, and I think a lot of people need, like they just want permission, I guess, um, to, to say it's okay to go figure it out. Um, and that kind of leads me into, uh, you know, the, the industry. And one of the first things I kind of really wanted to catch to, to touch on is, you know, I had a client come in the other day and they were, um, asking about the latest trend. And I just thought it was kind of like funny in a way. And let me know your guys' thoughts on this subject, because, um, it's one of the, I have two things with clients that, that I, I just think are kind of funny. And I do believe that you should, you come to a hairdresser, they're a professional and your, your goal is to, to give them ideas. But at the same time, we're in a world now where you have all the ideas at your fingertips. It's kind of our job now to take that idea and make it happen. Or to, let's say you're like, uh, you know, I really want a ton of layers and I want this fringe and like you have, really fine, thin hair. And, and so now as a professional, I got to guide you in different ways, uh, or adapt that style to you, but you should be able to come in with something that you like. Right. And, but at the same time, I get it. Cause you know, and this is me working out things in my head, but for me is I, I do want to give advice on a style or trend, but when you just say, what are the latest trends? I don't even think that exists anymore. Like, do you guys, there are trends, but there's so many that there's not just, it's not just the, uh, you know, Jennifer Aniston, Rachel haircut, you know, like that doesn't, that's not a thing anymore. Now it's like, you can kind of be whoever you want to be. Uh, there's so many styles and, and trends that go along with what you like and what you want. So, um, you know, I always think it's funny when a, when a customer now is, or a, a client is saying, you know, what is the latest trend? Well, for me, it's whatever looks great on you and fits your style. So what do you, what do you like? Like, who are your favorite people, um, that you like look up to style wise or, you know, things like that. So, um, I always, I just thought that funny, that was funny because I don't really think in my mind there are trends anymore, like a trend. It's not like the trend. It's what do you, what do you love? And and uh, what fits you. And, and that's where we're going to go. So my goal now, when I have a client in the chair is to really just talk about the different, um, things that they like and start fitting it in. What is their lifestyle like? Um, what, what is their job, you know, and things like that. Um, and that's another funny thing. Uh, and this was like an article that I read the other day and I actually can pull it up. Like, what is their job? Right? Well, that shouldn't matter anymore. Like we're in 2022, it should not matter, but it does, unfortunately. And I just saw this, like if Chick-fil-A, so Chick-fil-A, first off, this was the the headline, read this if you have dyed hair and want to work at Chick-fil-A. So apparently Chick-fil-A has an issue, of course, um, 
with no blue hair, blue nails, or blue lipstick. You're not allowed to look different or express yourself. Um, one Redditor commented. So somebody from Reddit commented that. Um, employees are required to have to be clean shaven, well groomed, and sporting a natural look. The handbook includes phrases such as neat and professional appearance, unnatural hair colors, and eccentric styles are not permitted, um, and makeup must be subdued and worn in good taste and not to be distracting. So I just don't understand why Chick-fil-A. So there's so like so many people say good things about the food and then the, also the the politeness of, I don't even know if that's a word, but um, the, the team or the staff there. And, uh, but it's just so crazy to me that like, these places, like, what does that have to do with, like, do people really care? Like, do we really care when we go to get a chicken sandwich if somebody has blue hair and blue nails? Um, do we? Let me know if 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 you think that that's a big deal. Like, for me, I just feel like we're at a time, like, why, why does it matter what, how somebody's expressing themselves? It's not... I'm first off going to look at that person and I'm going to have my thoughts, but it doesn't make me then think something of Chick-fil-A. Um, and I have plenty of thoughts about Chick-fil-A. So, you know, if we're, if we're going down that, like it has nothing to do with blue hair. So, uh, you know, what, what do you guys think? Do you think, do you still think that there should be guidelines to, um, somebody's appearance and where do you think that guideline sits? Because that's where I'm just a little confused on who is the person that gets to make that judgment. Yes, I guess the owner of a company, um, you know, but it. I just, I just feel like, uh, you know, to say, <laughs> I just love that they have blue lipstick in there. Um, so, so that's that. But let me know what you think. I, I think it's crazy. This was an article from Mashed. If you want to read more about it, I'll link it below. Um, and you guys can get the full, you know, story, but it just seems a little crazy. This was another article that I found that I thought was just mind blowing to me because, um, I've gotten into this kind of mode with clients, uh, when they're asking about their hair and, you know, damaging it and should they blow dry? Should they not blow dry? What products to use all that stuff. And, uh, kind of my go-to would be try not to blow dry as often uh, if you can, um, obviously in my mind, I always thought air drying it made the most sense. Uh, if you can, if you can't uh, blow drying, it's fine. And I know a lot of people that will blow dry. Some people will only do a blow dryer, no hot tools. Some people, um, will do a blow dryer and hot tools. Some people will just air dry or just diffuse or, uh, whatever. And some people use heat protectant products. Some people don't. So, my professional opinion, what I've always told any client sitting in my chair is that, uh, air drying would probably be the, with products. So put products in your hair, air dry it, um, conditioning products, um, things like that. And that is probably going to be the safest bet. And then if you need to dry it, then obviously try not to do hot tools every day and definitely use thermal protectant products um, on your wet hair and your dry hair, uh, as you're going through it. So this article, uh, was from in style magazine says, hold on, is air drying your hair more damaging than using heat? And I thought that this was a really interesting article. They did a study. Um, it was performed by a group of doctors who wanted to test the impacts of hair drying in different settings. There were five groups that each blow dried their hair at various distances, uh, for differing lengths of time. So one of those groups didn't get any heat and uh, was air dried at room temperature. The re results showed that although using a hair dryer causes more surface damage than natural drying, using a hair dryer at a distance of 15 centimeters or six inches um, with continuous motion caused less damage than drying your hair naturally. So this was, and then I read more into the article and basically 
what they're saying is that the interior of the hair, and I'll make this real simple. And then again, you guys can read the article if you want, I'll link it below. Uh, but basically the interior part of the hair swells when you don't blow dry it. So what that can do is cause breakage because it's swelling and the elasticity of the hair is only, you know, so, so much. There's only so much elasticity. So over time, if you just let your hair air dry and it keeps swelling up, um, it can cause breakage that way. And then uh, if you blow dry your hair, uh, it doesn't allow the hair to expand like that, but you can create surface damage. So it, this is literally life, right? So like everything, it's like you, you're you damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Like you don't have, no matter what, you're going to have damage um, in your hair. It's just which damage do you want? Damage from the inside or outside? So, uh, but I just thought it was fascinating. And so for me, I, it still takes me to the fact that maybe... Um, just not using hot tools, the best bet would be to share with my clients that, um, you know, to make sure that you keep your hair as healthy as possible, um, use, uh, the blow dryer further distance away from your head, use thermal protecting products and, um, you know, maybe a brush, soft bristles if you can. And, uh, you know, just don't overload it with heat and you should be uh, pretty good. I love that as I'm talking, I'm, I'm using blow drying, like I'm blow drying the hair, uh, as I go through it. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be my moving forward. I'm going to make sure that that's what I'm talking to my clients about and maybe not telling them to air dry their hair as much, um, and try to use that technique. Um, and then machine gun Kelly dyes his hair pink. He cannot work at Chick-fil-A. So that's official. Um, I think his hair is cool. I actually just wanted to, to go over it. Um, I'm still not sure if I figured this guy out yet, but, uh, but his music brings me back to when I was in high school. So, um, I think that part's cool, but the, um, you know, he, I like, I dig the pink, but beyond that, I'm looking at the cut because that's just kind of my, where my brain goes. And, uh, to describe it to you guys, he's, He's really definitely, it's a kind of a diffused, he's got th pretty thin hair. It looks like, um, he diffuses it a little bit or just scrunches it. Uh, it has kind of a gel crunchy look to it. And then it's, I can't see the back, but it's definitely kind of a slight undercut taken tighter at the temples. Um, and all wearing worn, worn, uh, worn pretty forward, uh, which seems to be if we had to say a trend, uh, right now, that would be definitely one of the trends. Um, and it's worn in so many different ways. I know my son who's, uh, 13, he, you know, he's wearing his hair kind of messy and to the front and scrunched up. He's got super straight hair, wants it to be wavy, uh, which is, I think a lot of the kids are, are trying to do that. Um, and this is kind of a version, um, it, it the bad hair day, is kind of a trend right now. It would be my thought process. And because it doesn't look like he's having a good hair day. It just looks like he woke up, scrunched some stuff in his hair and went. And, you know, those tend to be the trends as we, you know, the last however many years I've been alive, like the texture, messiness, bed head, like all of these things became trendy uh, and this is just another form of it. Longer haircuts. I think, uh, getting through COVID people didn't go to the hairdresser as much, had longer hair and embraced it. And, you know, this is kind of the evolution of that. Um, yeah. So last little bit, uh, Kendall Jenner debuted her brand new red hair makeover during fashion week. Um, the supermodel was out in Paris on February 28th when she had her new bright red hair down and straight. It's so funny because like the, the title of this is Kendall Jenner is unrecognizable, but obviously they recognized her and they took pictures of her. So she's not unrecognizable. Um, but what do we think of her red uh, tone? I think it's soft. It looks 
uh, almost like a muted tone a little bit. Um, not a lot of movement in it. it looks pretty one level. Um, her hair's, uh, her hair cut center parting, uh, some movement around the face, uh, real light on the, towards the ends, almost thin looking, uh, in this photo and looks a little bit thicker in, in the other area. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the, uh, that's her, her new look. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. All right. So that's episode number one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I had a ton of fun hanging out with you guys, talking hair a little bit, talking about business stuff a little bit, social media stuff, life stuff, uh, and, uh, just some ridiculous stuff. So, uh, I hope you guys are into the podcast. Let me know, uh, what you think, uh, on any of the platforms that you can, uh, send me a message. I love to hear your thoughts and, uh, you know, this is going to be fun. I'm going to try to put these episodes out on a weekly basis and, uh, you know, just keep it going. So if you guys want to, um, watch the show, then make sure you tune into our YouTube channel, free salon education. Uh, so you can actually see the images that I'm talking about. I try to describe them as in depth as possible. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Just kind of breaking down things that are happening in the hair world. So you guys can, you know, stay in tune with, the uh, the, the new and now, um, and also make sure you subscribe, uh, for the podcast. So you get alerts when it comes out and, um, also make sure you subscribe on YouTube so that you don't miss any videos that we're putting out and go to our online store shop FSE. I put out a, um, a cutting system. So if you guys are struggling with your hair cutting, uh, or want to just go more in depth and learn the terminology that I focus on when I cut hair. It has a, a PDF book, eight step-by-step -step haircuts. Um, you get a certificate to hang in your salon. There's a terminology one-on-one -on -one video. Um, there's all kinds of stuff packed into that thing. So it's $49.99 on our online store, Shop FSE. It's a download. You have it forever. Um, you can keep it. You can show it to your salon, whatever you want to do, um, you know, it's just a tool for you to use, uh, to understand the videos that I create even better. And then also don't forget, I, uh, we're now the patent status is pretty much legit at this point. Uh, we have a patented tri razor, um, that is a three sided cutting tool that allows you to cut 50%, 25% or hundred percent of the hair, uh, create a ton of texture in the hair. So if you guys are looking to upgrade your tools, uh, go to shop FSE, dot com. Um, and you can do that. And it, I appreciate it because it supports free salon education, everything that we're doing here, um, to create education for you guys. So, uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed the show. I really had a good time. Can't wait for the next one. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. All right. I'm just having a good time, having a bad day. Yeah.